Hey guys, Coach Jim here with Tower 26 Triathlon Coaching. Today I want to talk about the Malibu Olympic Distance Triathlon, which happens this Saturday, September 25th, 2021. It's the Saturday race. It's not the classic distance race, which happens on Sunday. We're going to talk about the standard, the Olympic distance race. I'm going to give you some notes on it. I've been on the podium a bunch of times for this race. I've competed in it countless times. And uh, I'm going to give you some tips, some course logistics. There's a little bit of change to the run course this year. So we're going to go over that and give you some reminders. So I'm going to run through this, going to not take too long doing this. So if there's something that you see, you can back up the video and you can pause it on that screen and kind of make notes of what you wanted to make notes of. But just some reminders throughout. So I'm going to share the screen here. I put together a quick uh, keynote presentation. So here is the Malibu Olympic Distance Triathlon, which happens September 25th. This Saturday, here's the podium from, I think this is 2011, Greg Bennett, Chris Lieto, Chris McCormick, and myself, some of the legends in the sport, along with Chris McCormick, Chris Lieto, and Greg Bennett. <laughs> That's me. All right, so race day checklist, swim, make sure you have your triathlon kit, you wear your triathlon kit under your wetsuit, two sets of goggles, one clear and one tinted. Remember, if you don't have this, there's places like the Swim Guy, Triathlon Lab, any places you can get it race week and not be rushing around hoping Amazon Prime gets it in. So you have the Swim Guy, which is in Santa Monica, Triathlon Lab, which is in Hermosa Beach or Redondo Beach, one of the two, but uh, somewhere down there in the South Bay. Have a brightly colored towel, have your wetsuit, Vaseline, and or glide, something that can help any areas that might be chafing under the wetsuit, and bring some toilet paper with you, and just in case the porta potties run out beforehand. This is the race kit that you are going to wear under your wetsuit. So it's either a two-piece two piece race kit or a one-piece race kit. It has a smaller chamois in the crotch area, so you're not running around with a wet diaper uh, when it gets wet as you would be doing if you were wearing cycling shorts. So you want to have a triathlon kit under your wetsuit. You don't change in transition. You wear this under the wetsuit. You strip off the wetsuit. You go bike and run in that same outfit. For the bike, here's your checklist. Bring your bike, bring your helmet, your cycling shoes, socks, sunglasses, water bottle, your nutrition, such as your gels or your blocks and your electrolytes. Make sure you have a flat kit in case you have a flat out there on course and make sure you know how to change it. So if you don't know how to change a flat, Take all the air out of your tire this week and just go through the uh, the steps you need to change that flat. So if you do get a flat on course, God forbid you get a flat on course, you know how to change it. You're not sitting out there waiting forever for someone to come help you. Also, make sure you have a floor pump with you so you can pump up those tires before you go in the transition. You leave your car, pump up the tires to a good 85, 90 PSI before you bring it into transition. Run, you want your running shoes, you want your race belt. The race belt is what you attach your race number to. You have this nice race kit that you're going to be wearing. You don't want to put holes in it by at, by putting the uh, the safety pins and tie and attaching it to your chest that way. Bring a race belt that you can attach the number to. You snap it around your waist as you run out of transition onto the run. And you go from there. Bring your hat and your vi or your visor, something to, to shade yourself from that open sun. There's no, um, there's no shade on this run course. So bring something that's going to help shade your face. So you can keep that nice relaxed face as you run. Remember a relaxed face leads to a relaxed body, which keeps us efficient. So you want to keep a hat visor sunglasses with you as well as your nutrition. Once again, your gels, your blocks, and your electrolytes, which are, is your salt tablets. Miscellaneous things you might need is your Garmin device, your training device, your heart rate monitor, your heart rate strap. Like I said earlier, your body glide or your Vaseline. You want to put on some sunscreen and transition before the day starts, help keep you cooler. Vaseline, like I said, electrical tape in case there's anything that's loose on your bike, you notice in transition that you have to tie down and a change of clothes. So after the race, you can get out of those sweaty clothes and get in something more comfortable while you're waiting for your award. Here is the schedule, just a basic schedule. The Zuma Beach parking lots open at 4 a.m. I've never had an issue on race day parking in those Zuma Beach parking lot. The Saturday race is a little less attended than the Sunday race. So Beach, beach parking opens at 4. You don't have to be that early, be there that early, but you will have plenty of space in that parking lot to park when you get there. 6.30 a.m., there's a little race briefing, the national anthem. So make sure you're down on the beach by 6.30. So get everything done in transition, get out of transition, get down to the beach by 6.30, 7 a.m. The race begins. When you check in, you will get your wave start time. So I believe they're every five minutes from 7 a.m. on. So pay attention to what time your wave is starting. It's ba based on age group. You're going to finish up and the awards start at 11 a.m. 
Saturday race day, wake up early, get your food in. You want to eat about two, two and a half hours before your race starts. So if your race is starting at 730, that means you're eating around 5 a.m. Eat something that's easily digested, oatmeal with a scoop of peanut butter or nut butter of some sort and a scoop of jam. Eat a banana about a half, an hour before you start. Start on your electrolytes right when you wake up, sipping on them. Don't just guzzle electrolytes. Electrolytes are something like noon or, uh, or something that can easily disintegrate into water and doesn't fill you up. Not a ton of calories, just adds that extra salt that you're going to need throughout the day. Once you get into your venue, you can go hit the porta potty and make sure you have air in your tires, but you probably want to put the air in the tires before you leave your car. So that would be, uh, that would kind of take care of that there. Set up your transition without adding anything that you don't need. You don't need buckets. You don't need a uh, umbrella. You don't need a stool. You just need the basics. Anything that you're going to need on course is all you need in transition. Cause when you're in an Olympic distance race, guys, every second counts. And if it's too much clutter and transition, then there's just stuff that's going to slow you down. So let's only bring in the transition, what you're going to need. Make sure you look at your path. You're going to take from the swim in from where you enter from the water into transition to your bike. And then the path you're going to take when you grab your bike and run out of transition to the bike out area. Same thing when you bike in, know the path you're going to take to your bike rack. And then the path you're going to take from your bike rack to the run out area. Get out to the swim early and make sure you get into a little, get a little easy five to 10 minute jog before getting into the water. When you get in the water, you can get about a five to 10 minute warm up where you're getting some quicker arm strokes in, just getting used to the water, getting that turnover and getting a feel for the water before the race actually starts. So get down to the water plenty early after you get that wetsuit on and everything set up in transition. Transition, here's just a little example of how your transition should be set up. You have your towel down first, then you have your bike gear, followed by your helmet, your sunglasses, everything right in order as you're going to use it. Everything's right tight and nicely laid out so there's no chaos. And when you're going from that, ver that horizontal to vertical position from swimming to running in the transition, your head's going to be in a little bit of a, bit of a chaotic state. Everything's set up the way you're going to use it so you don't have to think that much. You can just put on your shoes, put on your helmet, put on your sunglasses, grab your bike, and run out to the transition to the uh, mount line. Same thing with the run gear right behind the bike gear, your bike shoes, your race belt, your hat, your visor, and your gels. Know where your, where your bike is set up by finding a stagnant object, object, something like a tree or an outhouse or something that's not going to move that you can associate with where your bike is set up because there's going to be a lot of bikes in transition. You want to know where yours is. So if you're running in to transition from the swim, you can look at that tree or look at that outhouse and know, hey, my bike is in alignment with that stagnant object. Don't worry about sand on your feet when you run in. As you run through the parking lot, the sand will come off. You just be able to slip those socks on, slip the shoes on, and go. You don't have to worry about bringing a bucket to wipe those feet off. So the swim course is a point-to-point -point course. You start about a mile north or 1,340 yards north. Sorry, 1,340 yards south. So you're going to leave the transition area, and you're going to jog. This is a good, a good time to get your pre-race jog in. About 1,340 yards south, you're going to jog. That's where the swim start is. Water temperatures in the mid-60s, you are going to wear your wetsuit. Wetsuit helps you float, and it's just like wearing a motor. So you want to wear those wetsuits so you are comfortable in the water and not getting cooled down too much. Once the swim starts, once you go off with your wave, you're going to swim out 150 yards. You can make a right-hand turn. You're going to swim, no, swim north 1,340 yards, where you're going to make your second right-hand turn and come into the swim finish 150 yards in. to so ocean ed, entry and exit, and then you have a longer beach run. It's a pretty wide beach in Malibu to run into transition, so that's a good time to get your wits about you and, um, and start getting that heart rate down from that, like I said, the horizontal to the vertical position that you're going to be going from swimming to running. Like I said, it's an ocean entry. Malibu might have some big waves. So this is only something you want to be ready for. You want to dive under the waves. There's only, it's only a short break zone in Malibu. So it's not of a long area. You're going to have to do this, but you want to dive under the wave, grab the bottom of the ocean. So grab the seafloor bottom, the sand on the bottom, feel the bottom on your chest, let the wave go over you, hear it go over you, and then you pop up and keep moving forward. You don't stop in that area. You keep moving through those waves, get through the break zone, and then you can start finding that swim rhythm. Pay attention to your wave start at check-in. It's crowded at the start as you guys 
know if you've ever done any any wave start races, you're going to have a crowded start, but it will thin out, especially once you get through those waves and start swimming. So just be patient, relax, breathe. If you start to hyperventilate because there are a lot of people around you because it's colder water, just relax and know that your breathing will come back into good rhythm, good cadence, but you need to just relax and let it happen. And then you can keep moving forward with your race, but just remember, if you do hyperventilate, you're not going to sink. You just relax. You just let yourself regulate and then keep moving forward. Don't give up on the race. Once you get through that brace, once you get through the break, find your relaxed swim stroke. But remember it is an Olympic distance triathlon guys. You only have 1500 meters to get after it. So keep it a relaxed swim stroke, keep that cadence up, keep driving those hips to keep the cadence up, make sure you're sighting the buoys, you're swimming a straight line. And as you breathe to the right, you can always look, take a look at the, at the shore to make sure you're swimming parallel to the shore. Make sure you're staying tight to those buoys. So you're not swimming out too far. So you have to come back to the buoy. You're just adding yardage if you're doing that. So make sure you're sighting every six to eight strokes. After you make the second right-hand turn, you're coming back to shore, you're going to be faced with those same waves that you're diving under going out onto the course. So you want to make sure that you're, you're sighting under your armpit every time you turn to breathe and you're watching for oncoming waves because they're going to come up pretty quick. It's only 150 yards back to the, back to the shore. So let's make sure that you're looking under that armpit every time you breathe to see any waves that are coming and so you don't get tumbled. If you see a wave coming, you want to face the wave dive under it just as you did on the way out, let the wave pass over you and then continue swimming back to shore. There might two, be two, three, four waves. You have to do this, but a set of waves is only four, about four waves, approximately four waves. So you might have to do it three, four times before you swim back to shore there, you hit a lull and you can get back in, but don't stop in that break zone. Make sure you're always paying attention to those waves, face the wave, dive under it, let it pass over and then continue swimming back to shore. If you do start to get picked up and tumbled by a wave, get those hands out in front of you. We don't want you to be jammed into the seafloor, which we could, which could cause some injuries. So make sure you get those hands in front of you to protect that face and that head from jamming into the seafloor. When you do stand up and you run through transition, you'll be a little bit wobbly. Just take your time, but keep moving forward. That heart, that heart rate and that blood pressure will regulate as you keep moving forward. There's a little information on our coached open water swims that we have there every Wednesday and every Sunday. So if you want more information on that, go to tower26.com. Our, our transition one, make it snappy, but not hasty. Pull your wetsuit down as you run to your bike up that up that longer sand run, pull that wetsuit down, know where your bike is by that stable marker. If you need to wear socks, do it. Sit down, put your socks on, put your shoes on, put your helmet on, grab your bike, and you're going to run out to the mount line, which is right outside of the bike out area. You don't get on your bike and ride it in transition. Grab your bike, run it to the mount line. After Once you're past that mount line, get on your bike, and then that's where you can ride it. So run out through the transition arch before you get on your bike. Bike course is 24.8 miles, 40 K it's out and back rolling course. There's 1,545 feet of elevation game. You're going to ride a mile South through the parking lot on the parking lot roadway. You're going to make a U-turn and then you're going to come back North on PCH for the remainder of the course. You're going to stay right at all times. You only move the left to pass another athlete. Then you look over your shoulder and then move right when it's safe to move back to the right-hand side. The turnaround is at Deer Creek. So you're going to ride out to Deer Creek. If you look under the course map there, there is an elevation chart of my race two years ago. So as you see, there's not much flat, guys. It's up and down and up and down and up and down. So you have to keep consistent pressure on the pedals, but it is only a 40K, so you have to get after it. You want to be holding about 80 to 90% of your FTP over the course of the entire course. You never really want to let yourself free spin too much and you don't want to put out way too much power killing those legs on the climbs but you want to be do be a little bit aggressive because like i said in olympic distance rates every second counts so keep consistent pressure on those pedals be at that 80 to 90 percent of ftp throughout the course if you're on going off of heart rate you know you want to keep it around 90 percent of your max heart rate and if you're going off feel you want to be at a, on a nine on a scale of one to ten for a, the duration of the ride so it's a good undulating course. It keeps things interesting the whole way through, but there is definitely a good amount of time that you can make up by pushing over the top of the hills, staying on the pedals and pushing into the downhills where you can get up on the speed pretty quick. 
Once you do complete the course, once again, you're going to come back, you come past the transition area on PCH, you make a U-turn and you're going to that same mile south that you went in the trend in the parking lot, you're going to bring it back a mile north in the parking lot to the mount lot, the dismount line where you get off your bike before the dismount line. And then you run to your bike rack from that dismount line. Like I said earlier, be safe out there, strong, maintainable effort the whole way. Stay on the pedals, whether going up, down, pushing over the top or flat 80 to 80 to 90 percent of FTP, which averages out to 85 percent. Keep a comfortable cadence the whole way. You don't want to be grinding too low of a gear or spinning too high of a gear ever. You want to be in that 80 to 90 RPM average the whole way through. Like I said earlier, stay right at all times. You pass on the left and then go back to the right. Know your gearing and make sure you're changing those gears accordingly to keep that cadence smooth and relaxed the whole way through. So if you're going uphill, you don't want to keep in that same heavy, heavy gear you had when you're going flat. So change those gears accordingly so you can keep it in that 80 to 90 RPM range for the entire duration of the course. Stay present and focused on the process. Always be aware of your surroundings. There will be cars out there driving and passing you on the left so just before you bring it out to the left to pass someone make sure you look over that left hand shoulder make sure no cars are coming but there is a big breakdown lane uh, that you can be riding in and you will be on the safer side if you stay in that breakdown lane break the distance down into smaller chunks take it five miles at a time knock out five miles i'm gonna ride to the next five miles and then the next ride to the turnaround then i'm gonna ride to the next five miles next five miles so break it down into smaller distances and don't take it in one big 40k chunk Stay on your nutrition the entire time. Every 20 to 30 minutes, you're going to want to be taking in calories and you're going to be sipping on your electrolyte drink the entire way through the bike. It is a hot run and it's a flat run. It's a very exposed run. If you don't get your nutrition on the bike, you're going to feel it on the run. We want to be able to keep that cadence, that turnover and that speed up the entire way through on your runs. And that happens by staying on that nutrition on the bike. So make sure you're taking a gel every 20 to 30 minutes and you're staying on those electrolytes the entire way through your ride. We have a ton of coached workouts throughout the week on the bike. So if you want more information on those, they're virtually coached workouts, go to co go to training.tower26.com as you see that link there on the bottom. Transition two, same thing, carefully dismount before the dismount line, run your bike to the transition, to your transition rack. Sit down, put on, take off your shoes, take off your helmet, put on your socks and shoes. And as you run out of transition, you can put on that race belt. You can put on your sunglasses. You can put on your hat. You don't have to stand at your rack and do that. Every second counts. And you don't want to be it, looking at the results afterwards and say, God, I wish I would have been a minute faster in transition. Put on your socks and shoes and put on all the rest of the stuff as you're running to the run out. Make it snappy. Don't, don't make it hasty. Don't forget anything. So you have to run back. The run course is a little bit changed this year. It's 6.2 miles. Once again, 10 K off that bike. Well, what you're going to do is you run North for a good distance. You make a U-turn, you come back South. You're now the point doom parking lot is closed this year. So what the difference is you're going to come out and you're going to go out the PCH. Like you always do. You're going to make a U-turn on PCH, come back. U turn. You're going to turn left on PCH head North for 400 meters, you're going to make it to U-turn, come back south, come back the way you came out onto PCH. You're going to make a left on that westward beach road, and you're going to come down and start, instead of going all the way out the Point Dune parking lot, you're going to make a U-turn at the Sunset Restaurant. And then you're going to go do that whole loop again, out to PCH, U-turn, back back to westward beach road, back out to the Sunset Restaurant. So there's two loops out there of that little jut onto PCH to Sunset Restaurant and back two loops before you head back to the beach path to the finish line. So that's a little bit of a change. You're not going all the way out to the Point Dune parking lot like you would in years past. It's still a completely flat course. It's going to be hot with no shade. So that's where you're going to want to wear that hat, visor, and sunglasses. So if you wanted to get there race morning and go ride that part of the course, you could do that if you got there early enough and you had a light on you with your bike because it is pretty dark. And that's one other reminder, guys, if you have a headlamp or a flashlight with you, you want to bring that because when you are walking through Malibu parking, the parking lot at, at Zuma Beach in the morning, going to transition, it is pretty dark. So run notes at the beginning, make sure you focus on finding a rhythm. Your legs will open up in five to 10 minutes. But, but until then they might be kind of heavy. So stick with it and keep pressing through that uncomfortable feeling. When they loosen up, you can find that hard, maintainable running stride for the 10 K you want to find that hardest maintainable effort from beginning to end. Once again, break it down in smaller segments, take it one mile at a time, 
run your race, stay present, mindful. Don't think about how much you have to go. Just think about the process and think about it one mile at a time. You will have some bad thoughts. We call it the bad wolf here at Tower 26. They will pop up, turn them off by focusing on the process and make sure you're finishing strong. You put those arms above your head and you have a big smile for the camera as you finish. We have plenty of opportunities for you guys to train for your next triathlon with our coached workouts at the pool, both at, both at Wiseburn Aquatic Center in El Segundo, as well as Palisades Charter High School in the Pacific Palisades. So go to tower26.com for that schedule. We have a we have countless virtual workouts, both, both biking and running on Zoom and Zwift. So you get live coaching on those. So go to training.tower26.com. And uh, anything else you guys need, email us, contact at tower26.com. I hope you guys got something out of this. So Coach Jim out. I will be seeing you guys out there Saturday, and I will do another one of these for the Sunday race, if that's what you were tuning in for. So hope you guys got a lot out of this. Like I said, if you have any questions, leave it in the uh, comments section of the um, – of this YouTube and I will try to get back to you guys right away. So have a good one guys. Talk to you soon. Bye.